right guys hello and welcome to another YouTube video today we're gonna take a few minutes and we're gonna talk about batteries for those that uh, are new to the hobby now there's three different types of batteries that we've seen for the most part these are them and now there's gonna be other chemistry types but for the most part there's three types that we've seen in the RC cars okay now in sailboats I understand that a lot of them use the life batteries to operate their servos but they're few and far between so we're just going to stick with the RC cars and what you typically see there. Now normally what you're going to find these days is nickel metal okay, which is NIM8 or however you want to say it or you have lipo okay, lipo lipo it's lithium polymer Pronounced both ways. Uh, don't know that either one is correct. I say lipo. You might say lipo. Potato, potato. No big deal. Okay? Now, back in the day, yes, I'm old. Back in the day, we had another chemistry type. It was called NICAD. Okay? Now, the common factor between nickel metal and NICAD was that they both build what's called a memory. If you take the battery off the charger, too early or you put it on too early it would eat into the runtime or the, the life of the battery okay pretty soon you'd end up with instead of seven minutes runtime with the NICAD you'd end up with less than three minutes which sucked because back in the day we were dealing with 700 milliamp batteries you know the, the guys who had more money well they were able to get the thousand milliamps and the 1200 milliamps and they could man they could run forever they were getting almost 12 minutes of runtime it was really cool the problem with the NICADs was they were a very heavy battery, okay? The nickel metals came along, they're still, they still look like a, a nickel uh, or a NICAD, but they were a different chemistry, so they were physically lighter battery. They would still build a memory, though, if you put them on the charger too early or you take them off too early, okay? Now, that's when we also now have moved up to LiPos. LiPos are much lighter for the same or greater milliamp hour battery, okay? Now, there's a lot of things that go into battery tech, but for our purposes today, we're going to talk about the milliamp hours. We're going to talk about the discharge rate, the charge rate, that kind of thing, okay? So, now we're dealing with 5,000 milliamp LiPos on average. Okay, now on the battery, okay, there's a few different things that you'll see. Now here you'll see 5,000 milliamp, 30C with a 3C charge rate. 3S11. Holy crap, that's a lot of numbers. That's a whole bunch of numbers, isn't it? Okay, well let's break it down for you. 5,000 milliamps, okay, that is the capacity. Okay, that is how long that battery will run depending on how much load there is. Okay, now think of it as the size of the fuel tank in your car. Okay, the bigger the number here, the bigger the fuel tank, the longer you're going to have to run, you, you can run before you have to fill up. Now, the next important number, okay, is the 30C. That is its discharge rating. Okay. So, we've got a 30C discharge. Now, the C, I'm not going to get into all the details, but to figure out how many amps this battery can deliver, okay, we will multiply 30 by 5. We simply move the decimal over, 3 points, okay, and that is 150 amps. Continuous, okay? So, <coughs> excuse me. Let's say you have a truck that the speed control is rated for 60 amps, 80 amps, somewhere in that range, and you want to make sure that you've got enough battery for it. Well, this battery is capable of pushing, okay, or I'm sorry, amps get pulled, they don't get pushed. Volts get, put, volts get pushed. We'll get into that in just a minute. This battery is capable of delivering 150 amps, so it's more than adequate for your car that's going to require 60 to 80. In a burst situation, this battery can deliver even more, which is cool. You can usually figure that it's 80 to 100 percent more in a burst, so just for argument's sake, we're going to call it 300 amps burst. This means at a standstill, 
when your truck is sitting there and you pull the trigger and you go really you know hard out of the hole okay fast launch your battery can deliver for a very short time 300 amps okay which is cool that's not a bad battery it's not a great battery but it's not a bad battery by today's standards well there's other batteries out there that have a higher discharge rate you will find some on the market that have got a 75 seed rating so you'd multiply the 5 times 75 okay now 5 times 75 that is 225 amps I've kept the numbers simple so I can do them in my head and I don't have to pull out the calculator this morning now <coughs> with that you usually will see again a burst rating somewhere around 450 amps so you get into a truck like an X-Max where the bare minimum that tracks the states is 5,000 milliamp 25C3 cells. Well, this exceeds their minimum by a good chunk. This would be a great battery at 5,000 milliamp 75C. It would be a great battery for something as large as the X-Max. Okay? So those are the things to remember. Okay? The discharge rate is not directly the number of amps but it's a rating to get you to understand how to get the amount of amperage it can deliver so let's take a look at a few other batteries here real quick <coughs> excuse me now Traxxas they have for their trucks okay they offer and this is one of our older ones that we uh, run quite a bit this one is 5800 milliamps it's got a 25C rating. So, how many amps does this one deliver? Well, we move the decimal over. So now we basically have 5.8 by 25. So a little old school math here. And 0 and 16 and 1 is 11. And 0 is 15 is 4 is 1. Take the decimal over 1. 145 amps. Okay that's how the math works to figure out how many amps your battery will deliver moving on I've got one more really cool battery to show you guys there's this little guy for max amps let's see can we get focus eh, it's not gonna focus really good on that now this little guy <clears throat> he's only 1600 milliamps so he's not gonna run very long Okay. But the important part with this battery is it's 150 C discharge. So I've got 1.6 times 150. Oh, let me get my rag there. So we're at 150 times 1.6. Doesn't matter how you multiply, math still works the same. Zero zero five one zero zero four two two hundred and forty amps. Okay, from this little guy. Now, every battery has its own purpose. The purpose that I have this battery for is for drag racing. I only need to go down the drag strip a couple of times with each battery. I don't want to carry the extra weight of a big heavy battery like this. Not to mention this battery doesn't quite deliver the punch that I'm going to end up needing with that car. More on the drag car later. So, now that we have a grasp on the amperage, I'm going to show you one more battery right here. Okay. This is an E-Flight 3-cell. Okay. It has, i got to look closely, I'm nearly blind. It has 800 milliamps. Okay and it's a 30C discharge battery. This is perfect for small foamies, little airplanes, lightweight, okay? This thing will run you for eight to 10 minutes and you'll have a good time with that battery. Would I put this into a car? No way, okay? Way too small. 800 is only 0.8 amps. As we take, again, that decimal over, we turn around and multiply that by 30, Okay, we can get rid of these little zeros, they don't matter over there. Zero, 24, move the decimal, 24 amps. 
Now when you've got a car that uh, is uh, dealing with a 60 or an 80 amp speed control, it's going to be demanding a lot of amperage at launch. And if your battery can't deliver, it will cause damage to that light bulb. Okay? So, again, that's how you calculate how much amperage you can get out of a battery. Moving on. We're going to come back to this. We're going to revisit this battery. This is the importance. Now we're going to talk about charging. With a LiPo battery, oh, I hope you guys can't read that. Anyways, not supposed to be showing price tags online. We just don't do it. Okay, now for this battery, you'll see that it has a 3C charge rate. Okay? What that means is we again go back to the 5,000 milliamps. Okay? It's got a 3C charge rate. So we move our decimal over, multiply 5 by 3, and we get 15. That battery can be charged at 15 amps. At 15 amps, a 5,000 milliamp battery is going to take roughly 20 minutes to charge. Safely. Okay. Now, I want you to take special notice on the Traxxas battery. This battery does not have a charge rating specified on the outside of that case. So we have to assume with the Traxxas battery being 5,800 5, milliamps, we move that decimal place over, knock off the unnecessary zeros because they just don't matter. 5.8 amps is all it can be charged at. Okay? I hope everybody's understanding where we're at now. Now, some of you are going to say, oh, I charge my batteries at the max, whatever. I've got a 12 amp charger and I hit them hard. Go for it. That's on you. Okay? When you look at the manufacturers and what they recommend, they do recommend that you follow their C rating for charging. Okay? The 30C there, that's the discharge, okay? 3C, charge rate, okay? It will say charge rate if that's the charge rate. 30C is not the charge rate, that's the discharge, okay? So, don't make that mistake. Always charge your batteries at or below the recommended charge rates. Always, always, always make sure that your charger is fully capable of the battery type that you are charging, okay? If you put a LiPo battery on a nickel metal charger and you crank the amperage up, I can almost guarantee you, you will have a house fire, okay? You don't want to burn your house down by charging your LiPos wrong. So, always make sure that you're charging LiPo batteries with a LiPo compatible charger. Also, Whenever charging, storing, make sure you're using your LiPo safety bags, okay? Those are supposed to contain, if there's a problem with that battery, they're supposed to contain the fire to the inside of that bag. Most of them are made of Kevlar lined material, okay? They still might smoke a little, but at least you won't burn your house down if there's a problem. So with that, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to watch this video. Make sure that you hit the like button if you like the video. If you didn't like the video, hit that dislike button twice, okay? And uh, make sure you subscribe and do all that stuff. Coming soon, we're going to be talking about uh, some TRX4 upgrades, and we're going to get into a little bit of drag racing and have some fun there. So stay tuned. Look for more videos. Thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you again real soon.